Hey everybody, it's Margaret out of uh, Thorpe, Wisconsin with Main Street Hair Solutions. I wanted to talk today a little bit about how to shop online for a wig. So before I go any further, I don't even know if I need to say this because if you're following me, you know how I feel about online shopping, um, but I'll say it anyways in case you're new. Um, hands down going into a wig shop will beat any other option any day of the week so if you have a wig shop in your area that is where you want to go i'm located in thorpe wisconsin i also have another location in woodbury minnesota and i sell online and the reason i sell online is because i know that there are not a lot of wig shops out there around every corner and that um, uh, there's women out there who are literally stuck shopping online because they don't have a wig shop as an option. And so I built an online shopping site for Main Street Hair Solutions so that I can get out there and try to help those women who are you know, feeling kind of lost. So obviously there's no shortage of um, options for buying a wig online. There are tons of websites. Um, what MainStreetHairSolutions.com offers, number one is free shipping. Um, number two is free returns. Um, as long as you work with me or one of my staff members while you're working at purchasing that wig. So if we help you through that process and you receive it and you don't love it, we want you to send it back. There will not be a restocking fee. You'll have to pay to ship it back to us, but there won't be a restocking fee and we're gonna continue working together until we find that perfect one. Um, those restocking fees really stink. And so it's just something that I want to do to help um, so that you're not, women out there aren't getting stuck with a wig that they really don't love. So um, we're a little bit different in that way. Also, uh, we're a very service-based business. Whether you're in our one of our stores or online, it's all about our client. Serving our client, hearing them, understanding them, spoiling them and just making sure that we have a good understanding of what they're looking for and that we make them feel like a million bucks from the time they walk in to the time they leave or if we're working online we want you to have just as good as an experience virtually over the phone email messenger video chats exchanging photos and things like that. We want to make sure that you have a fantastic experience too. So those are just some differences and we're really happy to offer that level of service. But in terms of um, just in general, how you shop online for a wig, whether it's with Main Street Hair Solutions or someone else, there's some guidelines there that, that don't really change no matter where you're, you're, who you're shopping with. And so one really important thing to remember is that just because you think a wig, you know, a style is pretty doesn't mean that it's right for you. I cannot stress that enough. And so color is also an issue and there's other parts of that, but the main uh, the main issue, I think, is that an online shopper will be looking at picture, you know, images of this wig, and it's just the cutest thing ever, and they get it, they put it on, and on them, it's just not right. And so to help try to avoid that, what I suggest is that you really be honest with yourself about what styles look good on you? What hairstyles have you had throughout your life? If you've had hair, what styles have you had? If you have the type of face where you know that like a super short style does not flatter you or a bob or, um, or layers that, you know, come around your face or 
um, really long hair with no layers at all. You know, if you know that, oh, the one time I got my hair done and it looked like this and it was really bad, you know, you may have liked that style on uh, a picture of, that you saw somewhere, but on you, it, it didn't serve you well. So um, you have to take all of that, all those experiences, and just be really honest. And when you're shopping online, don't get caught up in how adorable this one wig is when you know in your heart of hearts that it's just not going to work on you. Um, and then another thing is color. It's almost impossible to nail the color perfectly so that what you think the color is when you're looking at it online and when it shows up at your door is exactly what you thought it was. Um, probably pretty slim. The only way that it would end up looking like what you expected it to look like is if you've had it in the past and you ordered the same color again, then you're good. Um, but you have to, you know, accept the fact that computer screens and phone screens and laptop, uh, you know, tablet screens and stuff, they just don't convey the color real well. We've known that about everything, clothes, whatever. Um, and so be open-minded about that. And if you're working with me, we're going to try to work around that. But, um, you know, you've got to keep in mind that, you know, you can't be utterly disappointed about the color if you're relying 100% on a screen color swatch picture. Um, another thing is to, before you even begin shopping, think about asking yourself questions like, how much time do I want to spend on my hair? Do you want to just put the wig on and, and, and go? Do you enjoy fussing with a curling iron and a flat iron? Do you enjoy styling your hair? Those are very important questions that you need to ask because that will help determine what type of hair fiber is best for you. So there's human hair, there's a synthetic fiber that is heat friendly, and then there's regular traditional synthetic. Traditional synthetic, you can't touch with heat with a tempo pole, you'll ruin it. So the style is what it is, the curls, the waves, the straightness, it is what it is. Uh, with the heat friendly synthetic, you're able to, to change, the, it's still a synthetic fiber, so it's not real human hair, um, but it does give you the styling flexibility of being able to do straight and waving curly. And then of course, human hair goes without saying, it, it feels amazing um, and you style it and treat it just like human hair. With, with human hair, hair piece um, products like the sh special shampoos and the conditioners and hairsprays and styling products and stuff like that. But as far as like the heat and blow drying, you know, you're treating it the same, the same way. And so human hair um, products are significantly more expensive than synthetic, whether it's trad traditional synthetic or heat friendly fiber uh, synthetic. Uh, human hair is, you know, a lot. If you're looking at a human hair wig and it's Oh my gosh, anything less than, oh gosh, I would, um, even $500 seems low. Um, you know, I would be really leery about if that really is human hair, uh, if it's being advertised as Remy human hair and it's $500 or, it, it's just, it's not, it's not authentic. It, it, the quality cannot be there because it's just not possible. Um, and so generally speaking, in my experience, I see human hair hair pieces that are upwards of a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred, two thousand, twenty five hundred dollars, you know, that's just that's just what they what they cost for a really nice human hair wig that you're gonna love. Um, so going back, um, you really want to think ahead of time before you start scrolling and looking at pictures and getting caught up in, oh that's pretty, be really thinking about do I want to style my hair? Do I want the texture of human hair and can I afford it? Or do, can I not afford it, but I do want to be able to style my hair, then that's going to be heat friendly synthetic. Or I don't want to do anything that has to do with a curling iron or flat iron, which by the way is how I feel. And so then you're going to go with traditional synthetic and it's literally just put it on your head, move the hair around for a second and, and you're good to go. This wig, by the way, because somebody's probably going to ask, is Rachel by John Renault. Love it. Um, 
Anyway, so the hair fiber is something that you need to think about. And then just being honest with yourself about the style. Um, this wig back here, I think my camera can pick it up. This one right here is um, Zara. She's a John Renault piece and she's really, really long and straight. Um, she's so pretty and she looks good on, on people, other people, not, not me. And so um, that's just an example. I like Zara. Um, I could get her in whatever color that would work well with my skin. I like this color a lot, 24BT18S8. Um, but that, that super long hairstyle on me just doesn't work. And so really important to be honest with yourself. Um, another thing to be thinking about is the features of the wig. If you're wondering why does this wig cost 150 and this one costs 250 and this one costs 500, you know, if, if they're all synthetic. So we're talking about synthetic wigs here. Um, why is there such a price difference? The price difference is pretty much solely based on how the wig is made, um, how it's constructed, what features it has, you know, what's going on underneath the hair, inside of the cap, that the, that the hair is tied to, what's going on in that cap. And so there's different ways that wigs can be made, that the, that the wig cap can be made. And it uh, basically results in varying levels of believability. Uh, does it have any monofilament at all? Monofilament uh, gives a scalp appearance and it just looks real, it's more real. Does it have a lace front? Um, is it hand tied or you know machine wefted or whatever? I don't have time to explain all of those things, but those features, um, if you want a personal description of them, call me and I'll one on one just explain all the differences. But um, all hair pieces have features or lack thereof, and that is what dictates the price. And so think about do I want to wear this wig and not have a soul know that I'm wearing a wig? Top secret, then it's gotta be believable and not 100% of the time, so I'm not gonna claim this, but a lot of the time, it will require a wig with a monofilament top, probably a lace front unless there's a really heavy bang um, in order for it to look like really, really real. And so if you have had experiences in the past with a wiggy looking wig, take a look at that hair piece if you still have it or, or just think back on it. Did it have any monofilament, is it? Was it made real inexpensively and just very basic? Um, and if so, then that will tell you, you know, I've got to look at a nicer wig next time that I'm shopping for a wig. Look at something nicer that has more features and that'll result in a more believable wig that you'll feel comfortable in. So um, I can't think of anything else that I wanted to um, talk about. Just trying to be a little bit helpful, I hope, in that online wig search that is so very frustrating. Um, so again, if you have a wig shop in your area, go to it. It doesn't have to be mine, but I'm just a big supporter of wig shops. All of us. We're all in the same boat. So we're here to serve you. If you're in Wisconsin or Minnesota, you know, look me up. Um, or you can go to MainStreetHairSolutions.com or wherever you live, see if there's a wig shop in your area, uh, a nice one <laughs> that'll serve you well and has good, good products. Um, if a wig costs $20, run. Um, so that is it. MainStreetHairSolutions.com is our website. My phone number, if you want to call me, is 715-669-6500. My name is Margaret. Thanks so much for watching. Sorry this was so long, but gotta give you the information. Thanks, bye.